Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Hello Health. And actually, this episode's our season finale. Over the last two months, we have been interviewing local doctors here around the area, bringing them to you across our YouTube live channel here. So just a little, uh, little tidbit on what Hello Health is and what we've been doing over these last couple of months. Like I said, we've been bringing these local doctors to you. Uh, we have actually get them on the show. They're going to go through a presentation of a lot of specialty topics. And then at the end of our episode, we're going to have a live Q&A with these doctors. And that way you can ask your questions about their topic to get a little bit more info. And you can actually have them answered live on air. Today's not going to be any different than the last couple of episodes here. We've got a great one ahead of us. We have Chris Kegler here from Northern Nevada Physical Therapy. He's going to be on the show talking about walking for our health. Something that we take for granted every day when we're younger is our ability to walk and be healthy with that. So, but before I bring him on, my name is Kyle DeVries from Health Benefits Associates. You're live on our YouTube channel right now. We have plenty of pre-recorded videos as well as live broadcasts here coming up in the next couple of months. So if you, so if you can, like and subscribe to our channel if you like our content. Also make sure to ring that bell next to the subscribe button and that way you're going to be notified when we go live with these live events here. So coming up in the next couple of months, in October and November, we have Mastering Medicare. We already started one on September 15th. Our next episode is going to be October 15th when Alex Sampson goes live answering your questions live on air about Medicare just in time for the annual enrollment period to start. Now, before I bring Chris on, let me introduce him a little bit as well as let you know at the end of this episode, after Chris is done presenting, we are going to have a live Q&A session, so make sure to ask, ask those questions. Now, Chris Kegler grew up in Las Vegas, moved up here to northern Nevada to go to college at the University of Nevada, where he graduated in 2005. He then attended Western University of Health Science in Pomona, California, graduated in 2011 with his doctorate in physical therapy. Chris now works at Northern Nevada Medical Group over in, in Sparks and as well as their Steamboat location. So he is actually a certified strength and conditioning specialist, loves training for triathlons, hunting, and then spending time with his family. So right now, let's bring Chris on and let's get him on air. Chris, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Well, hey, Chris, <laughs> uh, go ahead and take it away and looking forward to hearing what you have to say. All right, perfect. Um, so uh, again, my name is Chris Kegler. I'm a physical therapist here in Sparks, Nevada, mainly working off of the Prater location. Uh, and oftentimes in my last few years of my 10 year profession, I've been having a lot of like uh, closure talks with my patients about establishing a walking program and how important it is to keep moving. Uh, and I, uh, we can't stress enough how much it is and how important it is to keep moving. But oftentimes people have questions on like, well, how much, how much can I progress myself? Where do I start? Uh, uh, and so I think you're getting information today that I would normally close out with my patients in terms of transitioning rehabilitation to normal workouts. And I think that's big in physical therapy is just returning patients to normal function. And so I think establishing a walking program is going to be huge and it's so easy to do. So I'm going to review just some uh, basic uh, ideas uh, to get, get you started uh, and hopefully different levels of walking and walking intensity type of thing. So a couple of the talking points, I think primarily, first and foremost, it's very important to get clearance from your primary care doctor or cardiologist if you have any concerns about uh, underlying con health conditions. Uh, balance and falls are always uh, questionable too. And if you have concerns, your therapist and or doctor can do pre-screenings and have, a, have that talk. But uh, I'm going to focus more on just the walking and the balance and the falls, which was addressed in a previous episode. So make sure you check that out too. That was a good one. Um, so some of the things just to start off with before we even get into any type of uh, distance or time is how do we track it? Uh, so some of the equipment, and it's all optional, then there's a lot of different things out there. Um, a GPS tracking watch is nice and easy. You don't have to find it you would just wear it on your on your wrist and they can monitor your heart rate your steps and your time 
And those are good objective things to measure your progress because some people don't know if they're progressing or not. So that's always a good way to track it. Um, there's also apps on your smartphone. Uh, you know, if people uh, aren't attuned to what's new, what's great out there, there's um, Strava is an app, S-T-R-A-V-A, -A, that I like to use. And there's a free option, uh, but it, it, it tracks you. There's GPS. It tracks your speed. Uh, I primar primarily do it for my running, my hiking, sometimes swimming. Uh, and I think there's it's very easy to use. But there's also Apple Health, Google Fit, Walk Meter, Map My Walk, Map My Run. Those are great tracking apps, uh, and typically a watch can talk to that app, and you can track it and log everything that you're doing so you can mark that progress. Um, another good thing to do is have good shoes, good support. I can't tell you how often people come into my clinic with back pain or foot pain, and I take a look at their shoes, and I just do the, well, well what is that? So I tell them to go to a local running store that they will assess your foot. They will take videos of it, uh, of you walking. They'll bring out two to three different pairs of shoes for you to try on. Support underneath your, your whole body is very important with any activity. You have to have the right shoe. Uh, it's your chance to play Cinderella, right? So get to that local running store, uh, get fitted for those shoes. Um, uh, another question people typically ask me is uh, why a running shoe versus a walking shoe? You know, there's more options with running shoes. Just because you buy running shoes doesn't mean you have to be a runner. You can walk in those. And if you think about running, running is more impactful than walking. So those running shoes might actually last longer. Uh, running shoes also have more options. Uh, they're more comfortable and there's more support I th and more research done, I think, on running shoes. Um, so some of them are flashy, but uh, you just see every year that they kind of go through trends, but uh, you'll find something that you like uh, at one of the local stores. Um, and typically, new shoes can last 300 to 500 miles. So that's where you, uh, tracking your miles, tracking your time, that's that comes into play because when you start wearing your shoes out, you start losing that structure and then you can start over pronating. Then you can cause stress in the knees and the hips. So typically track those. Some people write dates on them uh, and like on the white part of the side of the shoe. And that way they can just either replace them after a couple of years or that that mileage if you track it through one of the apps or your watch. Um, but they can last, like I said, three to 500 miles, but it depends on the type of shoe, the brand of the shoe, but you just gotta find what works best for you. Uh, another good thing to carry around is a water bottle. You don't know how, how long you're gonna be out there. It's always good to stay hydrated, even in cold weather. Uh, carry more during the warm seasons. Uh, there's options like handheld water bottles or hip packs. Uh, and then that'll give you a chance to carry some electrolytes if you're going to be out there for more than 30 minutes, more than 45 minutes. Uh, another good thing people underestimate is protective wear, uh, hats, sunglasses, sunscreen. Physical therapy is all about prevention. Uh, so we want to help prevent injuries. We want to help prevent falls. We want to help prevent skin cancer. Um, so all this information is very important in terms of preventing anything else. And I think insurance companies would love that too. Prevention is a lot cheaper than treatment. Um, so let's move on to the benefits of walking. Speaking of the hydration. Um, benefits of walking. You can have improved energy and mood. Uh, you decrease your chances of heart disease. You can combat adult onset diabetes, improve bone density, control obesity, improve your sleep and alleviate stress. Uh, like I said, people underestimate walking um, and you can control a lot of disease processes if you start implementing some type of uh, cardiovascular exercise. Uh, it's recommended 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity per week. So if you think about it, that's 30 minutes 
five days a week. And then people always ask, what's moderate? That's where you track your heart rate. You got to get your heart rate up. You know, if I'm sitting there and just walking at a casual pace and my heart rate's just at the normal 70, am I really pushing my heart to work harder? So try to increase your intensity with those walks, almost like a speed walk to get the heart rate up. Um, aerobic activity is defined as involving or requiring that oxygen. So you need to be able to push yourself a little bit more and don't be afraid to breathe heavy and work hard and you will be sore. People are sore, but your body adapts to it. Um, another good thing with walking is to establish a goal. Um, goal should be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and also have a time frame. Um, for example, walking one mile uh, can take 20 minutes. Some people might take longer, some people might be quicker, but it, if you time yourself in one minute, then you have yourself a goal, like, oh, I'm gonna push myself harder. Or if you're at 23 minutes, you're like, oh, I need to get to that 20, but give yourself a few weeks uh, to attain those goals. Uh, walking four blocks, you can kind of flip it around and say, okay, maybe I'm just gonna stay at four blocks if that's my limit. And that could take about 10 minutes. And if it takes you longer, then maybe 10 minutes is a good goal for you to uh, attain in a few weeks. But don't expect to make uh, too many gains uh, right off the bat. You got to find your threshold first, and then you can work towards pushing it a little bit more. Uh, time and distance are great ways to monitor your improvements. Um, and you know, if you find just a local path in your neighborhood or even a park, you can say, okay, I did this walk in 25 minutes. Now I'm going to shoot for 20. And then you just kind of push yourself a little bit. Um, another good idea with walking is to just kind of keep track of uh, your techniques. You want to promote and facilitate uh, a nice upright posture, uh, good mechanics, uh, good stride length, that heel to toe striking. You don't want your base of support to be too narrow or are you crossing over when you're walking? You wanna maintain that nice hip width walking, uh, good cadence, good velocity, good base of stability. So avoid too narrow or too wide of a base and relax your arms. People underestimate how important your arms are with walking, but the walking, the arm swing actually helps with your balance during walking. Um, the more you think about walking, the worse it's going to get. So just try to let it be as natural as possible. Um, so moving on to probably the parameters. So I'm going to start with if you classify yourself as kind of like a big beginner, um, this is what the next section is going to talk about. Uh, so tip number one, like I talked about before, is walk faster than what you normally would walk like at the grocery store. Try walking a brisk pace. If you do have one of those watches or an app, um, and if they monitor your speed, uh, try walking three to three and a half miles per hour. And you start with maybe 10 minutes per day uh, for the first three weeks. And you can walk seven days a week if it's a low intensity like that or low duration, uh, as long as you don't have any pain. If pain starts coming on, just make sure you wait a couple days before you start walking again. And if it doesn't uh, let up on you, then uh, reach out to your doctor or your therapist. <clears throat> uh, you can increase once you've established a good base of walking then you can start increasing your minutes per week or per minutes per walk like two to five minutes um, but try to establish a good base uh, within three to four weeks before you start progressing every every walk two to five minutes uh, and try to work yourself up to that 30 minutes per day and general rule is if you have pain, go back to what you were doing before that was pain free and stay there until you feel like you've built up enough endurance to get past that pain threshold. 
And sometimes that strength or that control can, it can take up to eight weeks for you to de develop that. So don't get down and out. We all have to start somewhere. Uh, some of us weren't natural born athletes and we just have to try harder than others. So don't get uh, too frustrated. Uh, the next category, intermediates. Uh, you can start probably at 30 minutes per day if you feel like you're in pretty good shape uh, and do that for five to seven times per week. You can increase your pace uh, three and a half miles per hour to four miles per hour. So again, we're increasing that speed to get that heart to work and get in that cardiovascular aerobic range. Uh, and again, you can probably start increasing two to five minutes per week if tolerable, uh, if your body can tolerate that. But again, that general rule, if you have pain, go back to what, what was pain free and stay there for another week. Uh, pretty easy there with the intermediate. And then if you want to challenge yourself at the advanced area, the advanced walkers or the people who, who believe they're in better shape, you can start walking 30 to 45 minutes per day, five to seven times per week. Uh, and then I challenge people who are a little bit more advanced to add intervals, uh, you know, one to two minutes of interval walking at that faster pace or you pick a landmark at the park, like I'm gonna walk faster to that next lamppost or I'm gonna walk faster to that next tree and then I'm gonna cool off with my normal walking. So interval training will help increase your threshold overall. So don't be afraid to challenge yourself, but safely, of course. Um, you can also add hill intervals if there's a hill in your neighborhood. You can just put your head down and start chugging along, chugging up a pretty nice great hill. Uh, Find what works best for you, but only do about a minute to two minutes of that because uh, repetitive overuse will lead to tendonitis and injuries. So don't get too overzealous with that. Uh, so you've got hill intervals, you can do speed intervals, or even stairs. I know that there's some uh, parks around here that have some stairs if you don't have stairs in your home, but stairs are also a good cross trainer too uh, to kind of mix it up a little bit you don't want it to be too boring if you start doing the same thing over and over and over again it's it's going to become monotonous uh, and then you're going to get bored of it and then you're not going to do it anymore so uh, other tips to keep it exciting well before i go on to other tips uh, going back to the intervals make sure you do it sparingly don't do it every single day you want to make sure you kind of sprinkle it in here and there, but not do it every single day because you're you're stressing your body in a way and you still need to be able to recover and you can still recover actively through just your, your normal walking uh, without the intervals. Um, so now let's jump back to the other tips to keep it exciting is invite friends. Start a neighborhood walking group. I've seen people at the softball field down here in Sparks and they all meet maybe two or three times a week and they get to chat and they just walk around the soccer field. I was like, that's great. I love seeing that, the camaraderie um, and you get to challenge each other. Uh, I've been involved in a couple challenges, especially during the pandemic, where you challenge yourself and you challenge your friends to weekly or even monthly challenges. And what's more motivating besides our health is money. You know, throw a, throw a dollar here and there, like per week between, you know, eight or 10 people. And the winner, the person that has the most steps or the most mileage at the end of the month can buy everyone lunch, you know? So make it exciting, uh, get together with friends because sometimes it does take a, a, a village. The accountability I think is what motivates people too, besides our health and money. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to uh, challenge yourself with those challenges. Uh, change your scenery, go to parks, the high school tracks. I know there's a couple high schools here that have public access, hiking trails, malls, or even large stores. I oftentimes hear, I oftentimes hear a lot of barriers are related to weather. And then I had another patient in here the other day that said, oh, I just walk around Lowe's. I was like, whoa. Oh, that's great. It's a huge warehouse. Walk up and down the aisles. Maybe you might pick up something to, sh to fix around your house later. But I know that there were mall walkers, Lowe's, Costco. I mean, you might not walk out of there. Um, uh, 
you'll walk out of there with a three hundred dollar bill too. But uh, but just find something to ch- to change the scenery up, and don't let the weather be an excuse. There's always ways around it. I know the smoke has been bad lately too, but those indoor facilities uh, will allow you to to walk around. They don't need to know that you're doing a walking program, but get creative, have fun, um, and stay healthy. Awesome, Chris. Hey, hey, thank you. I appreciate you coming on and, and talking about everything like that. And yeah, yeah, stay away from Costco when you go walking because yeah, you're not going to make it out of there uh, under $300 most of the time. So mm-hmm. definitely be careful in there. Um, but hey, we got a ton of questions that came through here. Before I jump into the Q&A, uh, I just want to say, you know, if you like this content, if you've enjoyed the season of Hello Health this year, make sure to subscribe and like our channel ring that little bell notification next to the subscribe button. That's gonna let you know when we go live and also when we post new videos. So we try to, we try to keep everybody up to date here on, on our YouTube channel and release things just about weekly here. Also, if you don't wanna just go onto YouTube, we are here in our office. We have offices here in Reno, Sparks, and in Carson City, and we're available Monday through Friday for you to come down and talk to. So let's jump into the Q&A here. I've, got, I've actually got a little shout out here from uh, Tim uh, just saying, hey, Dr. Kegler, good to see you again. So, and then we've got, let's jump in here, uh, Jose. So Jose is asking, is walking enough or should I be doing any other activities to improve my health? Uh, walking is just, uh, you can do more than walking. I love cycling to kind of take the weight bearing off your joints. So cycling is another good way to get the cardio. Uh, Swimming is another whole body, uh, but that's relative to the person. Uh, I I strongly believe that the variety is a spice of life. Uh, You know, that's why I got into triathlons because I wasn't good at any of those, but that's what motivated me was uh, being a therapist and really emphasizing prevention is I, I like to do different things. If I don't feel like running, then, oh, I can go bike. You know, if I don't feel like walking, then I'm going to go cycle. So you just have to, again, monitor that heart rate when you're on your cy- on your uh, indoor cycle, outdoor cycling, whatever you want to do. But 30 minutes a day of that moderate activity and just getting that heart rate up, I can't, I can't tell you enough that uh, my biggest pet peeve going to the gym are the people just casually riding the bike watching TV versus, you know, you got to get intense and start breaking a sweat to get that heart rate up. So just getting on there just for the motion is not enough. You got to get that heart rate to, to work for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and our next question here comes from Michelle. Uh, she's actually a two-parter here. Uh, do you recommend any certain brand of shoes for support? Uh, she says she loves her Nikes, but she's willing to change. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's personal preference. Uh, for sure, but you don't know until you get in there and you try the shoes. Uh, I've I've been fitted when I started running. I love my Brooks. Brooks were great, but then your feet adapt too. The stronger you get, the less support you might need. So now I run in Ultras instead of Brooks. So, but I keep I I might be worse than my wife with my shoe issue. Uh, I have three different pairs of running shoes that it just depends on how I feel. But if you use the same shoe, think about that repetitive overuse. If you're able to change the shoe and change, so you might have a Brooks and you might have an Ultra, but they offer different support, similar but different, but you can avoid repetitive overuse if you change your shoes out. So I recommend probably at least two different pairs of shoes to swap out just in case you, you're starting to feel some of that overuse with one pair of shoes, you can switch it out. So don't be afraid to switch it out. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm actually right there with you. I used to work for Under Armour, uh, so I have a shoe problem myself. <laughs> I've, I've got a different yeah. pair of shoes for whatever I'm wearing. So, um, <laughs> so, but, and so she's also, also asking, you know, do you recommend any specific store? I don't know. I mean, if you have experience at these places, uh, people love Shields here in town. It's just a big store. They have a lot of variety, but my personal preference is the Reno Running Company. It's a local group. Uh, they host, uh, uh, weekend meetups or even weekday meet- meetups. And it's a nice social gathering. And what's really nice about it is that 
as soon as you walk into the store, the shoes are there versus in Shields, you got to kind of hunt around. Uh, but I, I go to both places, but I try to support local and uh, I like those guys. They really do re a lot of good work uh, and they know their shoes and they're the, they'll videotape you. They've got treadmills in their in their stores, too. So uh, I get no kickback from them. So that's my disclaimer. <laughs> I just I, they're just really good people and they do good work there. So. Yeah, not only are we insurance brokers, now we're shoe brokers. So now, yeah, right. now we know yeah. who to go to there. <laughs> yeah, where's my Under Armour shirt? I need to get a kickback right. from them. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so you mentioned on, on the shoes, they've got a 300 to 500 mile lifespan on there. Um, does that change when someone's more, more along the lines of a runner than just walking around? it's hard to say uh, when you think about when you analyze the force of running it's eight times probably what walking is uh, so in my mind my critical thinking I'm thinking you know yeah I'm gonna wear it out more when I'm running because you know I'm pounding 200 pounds with running versus walking I can still drag my feet and compromise the integrity of the shoe so uh, yeah it's I think running is more impactful to answer your question than walking. Okay. Now, now kind of a question coming from me just going off of that. Um, yeah, does yeah. someone's gait and stepping, um, does that kind of have wear and tear on the shoe just depending on how they are? For sure. We, we subconsciously, we sub subconsciously create these motor patterns and we might not be aware of it, uh, and how we're moving. But if you take a look at your shoes and you flip them upside down, you can see which side you wear on more. So if I flip my shoes upside down, I know on my right side, I wear more on that on that right heel. So um, your local your therapist or someone who's attuned to running analysis can kind of give you more feedback or walking analysis can give you more feedback on, OK, why is this happening? So we can have more preventative type activities or exercises and education in terms of, okay, if you continue to walk like this, then maybe you might end up with a posterior tibialis tendonitis or plantar fasciitis. So we can give exercises to help again, prevent that. Um, so I, uh, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, that you can wear more on one side, which might compromise the integrity of that shoe. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we've yeah. got a couple more questions here. Uh, I've got Amanda asking, she loves hiking, but she's new to the, the area around here. Do you have any spots mm -hmm. that you like going to or that you would recommend? Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I hike, uh, but I hunt more than I hike, so I kind of blaze my own path. But I know that there's a lot of local trails around here. The Hunter Creek Trail is kind of a nice, easy one on the west side of town. Mount Rose. I have never done the Mount Rose hiking trail personally, but I heard there's an easy loop and then there's a hard loop. Uh, and I believe that there's some meetup groups that do hiking around town here too. Uh, but Hunter Creek, I've gone to a couple times and then I live in the Sparks area. So I just kind of find some of those paths and BLM uh, and take my dog out and I'll just kind of blaze my own path sometimes. Yeah, no, I mean, that's 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 what we used to do with our dog as well. Um, you know, Hunter Creek is a great one. I've I've been on that a few times, um, mm -hmm. and then you know there. I mean, there's Galena Creek, Thomas Creek, so you've you've got a couple different places around here, and just the ones I would For recommend sure. as well. So yeah, you can easily uh, Google that too. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. All right. So I've got Michelle on here. She's First, she said, I have so many questions. I'm sorry. So, Michelle, you don't have to apologize for asking questions. You, you, keep, you keep asking. Uh, but she said, you mentioned getting a GPS tracker. Do you know how accurate those are, or, and do you find them extremely helpful? Or uh, I do. I do find them uh, accurate only if you make sure that you're doing the software updates. I know I usually tip, I use a Garmin watch, and I link it to my Strava but it can get confusing because Garmin offers their own uh, social media app, but I like Strava because it, it connects me with a lot of my friends too. Uh, and they do the whole segment thing too. So you can kind of challenge each other. And I think the accuracy depends on the quality and I'm a big believer in what you spend is what you're going to get. Uh, so I don't know how the cheaper watches are going to do. I spend uh, probably too much money on my electronics 
but uh, I think it's important for me, especially with kind of the higher level stuff that I tend to do. But with walking, you might be, you might get away with some of the little options. Okay, perfect. Now we've got, mm-hmm. a, we've got a few more questions uh, that I'll get to here. Um, Tim is asking, if I walk a mile, do you know how many calories that's burning? Uh, yeah. That, that depends. Um, if you download one of those apps, it'll probably ask you how much do you weigh, how tall are you, and it might it might calculate that for you because someone like myself who's 200 pounds might, and it depends on your heart rate too, how intense, you know, am I walking at a four mile per hour pace versus a three mile per hour pace, and then that'll change your calorie expenditure. Uh, so your intensity will determine your calorie expenditure, but a lot of those apps will calculate that for you. So I can't, I can't do that in my mind for you. So sorry, Tim. <laughs> no problem. So it, just, just endorsing those, uh, those smart watches there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Where's my Tic Tac? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start making some calls to some companies here asking for that. Yeah. Right. Um, so Jose on here said he missed the beginning, but in and I don't think you went over this, uh, Chris. But are you going to be at the new hospital doing any inpatient work? Uh, I will not be at the new hospital. Uh, I'm, I don't, really don't know what our physical therapy plans are there quite yet. I think we're just looking to expand our Sparks office because we're getting so busy here. So uh, I'm probably a homebody in sparks here so i don't leave sparks unless i really have to no i'm i'm, I'm there with you i'm out in spanish springs and i gotta drive mm-hmm. all the way over here for work so <laughs> but, oh poor soul <laughs> no. right yeah <laughs> so uh one last one is tim's asking again uh as far as the intervals go what do you mean by that is it just pushing yourself harder when you're walking or or what are you talking about Yeah, so intervals, so say you're walking at a normal pace, or say you're walking at a four mile per hour pace, then you maybe you ramp it up for four and a half, like 4.5 miles per hour. So just a little bit faster, a little bit more intense for another minute, getting that working heart rate, and then you cool back down. So like a minute on and maybe two minutes at a normal walking pace. So intervals just means that you're you're pushing yourself a little bit harder for that short amount of time, and then you go back to your normal walking resting levels. You push yourself, then normal walking, then you push yourself, normal walking, and you you can count them almost like repetitions, like with a workout. It's like I'm going to do five intervals of one minute today, but make sure you get that rest in between. Awesome. No, thank you. So I th- that's all the time we have on questions. Uh, Chris, I want to thank you again for coming on. Uh, really appreciate that. And, you know, like I said, saving the best for last. This is the season finale. So once again, Chris, thanks for coming on. Yeah, you bet. I hope everyone enjoyed it. All right, guys. Hey, I, I do have one more. Jose uh, has a shout out, just says, hey, Kyle, congrats on the TV show. Jose, Thank you for watching all season. I, I, we really appreciate that. And I hope you tune in here soon when Mastering Medicare comes back on. October 15th is when that's going to go live again. We're actually going to have Alex Sampson in here talking about Medicare and some of the things that you need to look out for during the annual enrollment period. That starts at 3 p.m. October 15th. Other than that, thank you again for watching, everybody. This is it for Hello Health for this year. Stay tuned in the future for more episodes, though. My name is Kyle DeFries with Health Benefits Associates. Have a good one.